What's up, YouTube? It's Fitzbro, and welcome to my Deutsches Africa Core Guide for Company of Heroes 3, also known as DAC. Now, this is one of the factions for the Axis and Company of Heroes 3, and we're going to go through all of the units, buildings, techs, battle groups, and a few tips and tricks along the way for the faction. Now, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Most of my viewers actually watch my videos but are not subscribed, so take a moment and do that and welcome everyone who's joined new with the launch of Company of Heroes 3. I already have guides on the channel for the U.S. forces and for the British forces and I'm just now digging into the Axis forces. So hope you enjoyed this uh, guide to uh, the faction and then this will be followed up by a build order guide that you can try on the 1v1 ladder. You can pick up my other build orders in my Discord link down in the description and let's get into this. I hope you enjoy. So, like every faction you start off, you have your headquarters, and there are different units that are available right from the start of the game. You've got your Panzer Pioneer Squad that you start with at the very beginning. You can also train a, uh, a Panzer Grenadier Squad. You can train a Light Carrier, and you can train a Kradstrutzen motorcycle team. Now, I'm going to butcher some of these pronunciations. I'm just going to admit my German ancestors will be rolling in their graves. But uh, I'm going to do my best. And I'm going to set it so that these instantly spawn for you. There we go. And let's talk about these initial units here for the start of the game for deck. So you're going to start off with your... Uh, your pioneer squad. Now, this guy is basically he is your uh, your engineer type unit for the uh, for deck. Now, one thing to note, uh, as I say, they're like the engineer. Uh, th this faction can repair their vehicles with all of almost all of their infantry. So this this unit can repair vehicles. This unit can repair vehicles, and that's pretty cool. So you're able to keep your uh, armor alive a lot more easily out in the field. There's even a way to upgrade this, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, so this is your your light, uh, cheap unit to make. It's anti-infantry. It's got you have a rifle. You can see there. You can upgrade them to get, of course, get flamethrowers like every other uh, engineer package. You can get hazard remo remo removal, and you can also uh, get the grenade launcher uh, later on. Now I don't usually spend my munitions on grenade launcher, but that's something you can, you can get. Now you'll notice this on. Uh, all of your your infantry, when you check this out, they get a, a passive bonus when they are nearby to vehicles. So you want to be fighting alongside some type of armor. So since I have a carrier here, you can see this is lit up. Uh, so you, this unit's going to get increased weapon accuracy and make it harder to hit when near vehicles. So if I move away, uh, eventually that icon will gray out and I'll no longer have that. You can also, of course, upgrade. There you go, that went away. So you get the stun grenade, which is a way you can, as you can expect, uh, temporary, temporarily disable the opponent. Now, these units aren't wildly effective at fighting out in the open. I would highly recommend anytime you're going to fight with the Panzer Pioneer, and really the same thing for your Grenadier Squad too, make sure you are in cover. Ideally, uh, that green cover that's going to be the best tons for units. Don't stand by. in the middle of a point just to get the point and take tons of health, tons of damage to your you unit. Need. It's better to stay no in cover, problem. take the fight, and we take the points monsters. as you can, or group up your units so you can win those engagements. Ready now, the Panzer Grenadier squad is uh, going to be uh, a little bit stronger at, at uh, overall as a fighter. You can upgrade to have a MG34 light machine gun if you want for 100 munitions. Not very cheap. And you can get upgrades for a stick grenade and anti-tank grenade. So these are your main line infantry um, that you know and love from other factions. Uh, and uh, also you can get a focus fire at Veteran C orders the, uh, the squad to focus their fire on the target squad. And that's pretty much your basic infantry out of your HQ. Now you have two vehicles, which is unique. Most factions don't have vehicles available at the very beginning of the game. You've got this motorcycle team, which is extremely fast. Watch this. I mean, he flies around. So you have to watch this guy because it's so easily he'll go into the enemy territory. Not very effective fighter, mostly for recon. Very good for if you want to capture a point really quickly or disrupt the opponent's back line and try to run around and grab some of their territories just to mess with them. Good for that, not great for fighting. So that's going to be that bike. You can also get uh, a tracer marking veteran C for this to uh, mark enemy infantry that hit the machine gun. 
I will build this and often grab a few points, forget about them, maybe go grab some more disrupt. But uh, it's pretty much just kind of a you know a specialty unit for the the faction. And then you've got the, the light carrier. Now they're going to have a gun there on top, so it's going to be anti infantry. And you can also uh, garrison inside of that uh, troop, or rather load into the troop. And you can see they're actually up on top. They will take shots out of this vehicle. So if you upgrade you know, the flame th flamethrower package, you can use that. So that's pretty cool. So that's you're going to be your half track there. Now you're going. You can upgrade this to get an auto cannon conversion as well as a mortar conversion. Uh, once we get some of our other upgrades, so that's going to be you know better against. Uh, in enemy uh, infantry or better uh, just a mortar position so that's pretty cool so I'll show you that here in a second but that's pretty much all of your you basic units here oh this is veteran C uh, it will heal injured infantry when it's garrisoned inside so and of course can also distribute some medical supplies so ways you can use that now you will notice this faction uh, does not have a a, a medic tent or anything like that you can build in base you have to rely on your healing vehicle so whether you want to try to no use this it does have a cooldown uh, but your main healing is going to come from your uh, your light support company so let's go ahead and build that and from our light support company I'll show you that medical truck first since we just talked about it. That's actually an upgrade you have to get. So, well, it's, no, it's not an upgrade. I just don't have the resources. It's like, where, where's my truck? There you go. You have it available immediately because it, you don't have a medical tent, right? So you can get that. It's pretty cheap, 150 manpower, 20 a fuel. And a big thing with this faction is you want to have this, you know, moving up behind your infantry lines in a safe spot where it's not going to get flanked and killed because... If you lose your medical tent and you lose a bunch of infantry, you're probably on, on your way to losing the game. Keep this thing alive. Of course, use that reverse feature. Uh, you want to turn on auto-reinforce just like your, uh, your medical tent, unless you're trying to save up some uh, manpower. And another cool thing is you can use it to recruit a weapon. So if you have a machine gun out in the field or you kill an opponent who has a machine gun and he drops it, for the, the small price of 50 manpower, you can select that and pick that gun back up and then chill by the medical truck and re, re, uh, you know, replenish that unit. So pretty cool way to reinforce your front line. A lot of this faction, you're going to want to keep the creeping up with this. Or if you're under, there's a big push coming, maybe pull them back into your base because you have a bunch of troops coming back home. So that's going to be your medical truck. Uh, we also have an assault, assault grenadier, which is kind of cool. That's uh, going to be armed with a submachine gun. You can see there. Uh, this is going to show me there. And you can also throw... Uh, you've got grenades. So you've, you can get throw uh, grenade assault. You can, that's going to be a, a, a stick grenade. And this is going to be a smoke grenade. Uh, this grenade is very effective. Take a look at this. Watch this, watch this thing. It is a big boom, and they throw a bunch of them. So that's really going to, you know, if they're retreating, those grenades are likely going to hit something. So um, very good uh, unit there with the assault grenadier. Uh, now, 340 40 manpower. You can also get a machine gun. Now, we know machine guns from all the other factions you set up uh, to try to pin the opponent, uh, hold on to positions. And to get this next tier of units, you have to actually get fire support elements here. Now, before I do that, I want to show you. There's a few different ways to move up to the other tiers. Now, for some factions, you have to just build each tower tier on your way. So if I want to go to my uh, tier three, this is going to require either the tier two, right, the mechanized company, or I can get fire support elements, which is that upgrade right there. So you don't have to necessarily go for this tier two building if you don't want to. Okay, so we're going to go for it here. Fire support elements. And now you can get the half track, which is going to be uh, very good against infantry or uh, anti-air. It's going to be your AA gun. You can also go for a anti-tank team gun. We've seen that with every other faction. Nothing too crazy new there. And then you can also get a support gun team, which is kind of a unique thing here for the Axis. I'll show you this gun and uh, take a shot with them. But this is going to be anti-infantry, and it's a heavy weapon. So this will be kind of a an emplacement. Look at the range on this thing. So you could build it in your base and just leave it there. It's going to be safe uh, if you want to. And I can bombard from across the map. Take take a look at this thing. So if your opponent's dug in, call it in. You, maybe you're going to call in smoke. Uh, you can even get a hollow charge later on for trying to target a vehicle. 
So, pretty cool uh, weapon. It does cost 340 manpower, but some good uh, defensive capabilities with that weapon. I'm going to stop that from firing. And those are all your vehicles from your light support company. Now, I want to show you here on the left panel something pretty cool about this faction. So there's a timer on this. You would have noticed it if you backed it up uh, in the video. But you can uh, call in for just manpower. Look, all these things are only going to cost manpower, and they're discounted. Whereas, you know, in the light support company, it would cost 290 manpower to get a anti-tank gun. Over here, it's only going to cost 200 manpower. Now, it is on a cooldown, like I said, but this leaves you the possibility of... Uh, you know, as you're teching up, maybe you want to get some of these uh, along the way and in conjunction with training here at your traditional means. Now, uh, this is going to send in a Panzer Jaeger. The only way to get this is through this call in. This is going to be an AT uh, guy, kind of like a, you can think of it similar to, to the boys or your closest to a bazooka you're going to have with this faction. It's going to be an, uh, an anti armor gun. Uh, and he'll be on the back of a half track. You can also upgrade them on a machine gun. You can send them in with the assault mechanized. So it'll be a half track with a assault grenadiers. And then, of course, the uh, AT gun and the uh, the support gun, like we saw. So you can call these in. I'm not going to do it because I want to show you the next tier before it cools down. Okay? So while we're on that topic, let's look at our HQ. So you can uh, go to the... Uh, right here, the Armored Reserves. Now, I'm going to need either the Mechanized or the uh, Panzer Me Command. So I'm going to go ahead and get to the Mechanized Command because we're going to use that. I'll move some of these units out of the way. Okay, so now that I got this Mechanized Command, before I show you that, uh, let's see, right? Oh, no, you actually do. Okay, you need the you need to get the pan Panzer Me Command. You need all of them, okay? So once you've built all of your uh, buildings, it's going to unlock this tech that you can get for 200 manpower it took me a while to figure this part out so that's why i really want to make sure you pay attention here uh and once you have all of your tier of buildings it unlocks this at your hq armored reserves and once you do that pay attention to this panel right here New look at that now i can call in a panzer 3 assault group i can call in a stug assault group i can call in a panzer 4 assault group or everybody's favorite the tiger tank the most ruthless tank in the whole game. 800 man manpower and 180 uh, feel that bad boy is going to cost. I'm going to call that one in. And this is what I want to show you. Yep, when you call these in, there is going to be a cooldown on them. So if you want to get these super late game tanks and you can afford them because they're quite expensive, but you're probably going to win if you can get this bad boy and stay alive. Uh, that's how you can do it by getting all those tiers and, and then upgrading that uh, at your HQ. Now, this can, of course, be upgraded with a machine gun. We'll have another video later where I show you all the tanks in action or something like that. So, you know, don't worry. You'll get to see those later on. But that is the, the, the heaviest tank you have available. And that's the only way you can call in that vehicle. Okay, let's get back to the traditional units. Uh, we've got our mechanized company. Where did we build that? Right here. Okay, so this is your tier two, two uh, vehicles. You've got the and the armored car, this is going to be the rad car. This is going to be anti-infantry. Uh, I'll just give that a fire so you can see it. Okay, so that's how that one shoots. Very good against infantry. You can get the martyr ta uh, tank destroyer. Now, notice this guy, he does not move his turret. Uh, it's very much the direction it's facing. So if you're reversing or something you're trying to retreat, the gun is not going to turn. So be aware of that. A very effective at taking out enemy armor. I even see this used a little bit in the one you see tier 3 coming out. Like, if you still have these alive, they're going to be effective anti-tank uh, weapons because that's what they're specialized in. And then you've got a very unique thing. The reconnaissance tractor can call in off-map barrages and uh, smoke and HE and can detect enemies in fog of war. So this thing doesn't fight, but you can see now uh, we've got a re reconnaissance ping that will go out here. Let me just move out here. It's got pretty pretty decent line of sight. And then you can also... Uh, so you'll see enemies, if they get close by, it's going to show them on the mini-map. So that's a pretty cool little option. You can also call in an off-map mortar or a smoke barrage, uh, or you can improve its uh, abilities with the veterancy. So I'm going to go ahead and call in that. You can see, look at the range on the mini-map. It's, it's quite large. Not as big as those, you know, those gun teams, but that'll call in an off-map barrage. There you go. And pretty quickly, too. Okay. Now, the next tier of your tier 2, let's call it tier 2B or whatever, you got to get this upgrade uh, at your 
Uh, same thing at some of the other buildings. Let's get the next tier. Okay, and that'll give you the Stug uh, Assault Gun. And you can upgrade that to get a machine gun as well. Very, very effective. Anti-infantry are getting things out of buildings. We'll go ahead and take a shot there so you can see it. Look at that. It's going to do a lot of damage, especially if you upgrade that with a machine gun. And then you can get the Half-Track Recovery Vehicle. Now, I don't see this used a ton. It is kind of fun to mess around with, though. Uh, I've used it. Now, a cool thing about it, you can, if a, there's a burnt-out vehicle, you can recover it, and it goes up, and it sparks it for a while. It does cost resources, and then it will restore that vehicle, and boom, it's back to life. You can even take an opponent's vehicle if you want to take one of theirs. Uh, but you can also, with this faction, you can salvage a wrecked vehicle. So you can go up to that burnt-out vehicle, and you use this, and it's going to salvage it. So... A pretty cool thing, and then you can also repair other vehicles with it. But you're probably not, that's probably the least likely vehicle you're going to get. That's all the tier two, and let's look at the tier three, last but not least. So, at your tier three, you can get the Panzer Medium Tank. That's going to be a pretty, pretty decent all around. Uh, you know, your tier three tank, before we talk about calling any of these really expensive ones, this is going to be, get you through quite a bit. It's anti infantry, anti vehicle, uh, especially paired with like if you still have these guys laying around. Uh, now this is not a tank, it's an anti-tank uh, gun team, and this thing is absolutely badass. Now, I would recommend either building this in your base or in a position that's really defended. I think it works better in team games a lot of times, uh, but this is, you face this if you've seen any of your allies, uh, this is, just destroys tanks. I'll go ahead and just take a shot at the ground just so you can see it. Look at this gun. It will just does just so much damage. Uh, does it show you the range on it here? I'm not sure if it will show us the exact uh, range on it here, but it has a ton of range. Trust me. Uh, now, an interesting thing about this: if this dies, if the crew like jumps up and runs off the map or whatever, and you can just put a new crew on it. Uh, and th the enemy will have to either like actually destroy the gun. Now realize they can also take your gun if they kill you and they jump on it. They can use your gun against you which I've used before. It's quite fun, or it's terrible if it happens to you. So beware of where you put that bad boy. Um, not too expensive. 240 manpower, 15 fuel. And then you've got the uh, the walking Stuka rocket launcher. Now, these guys are amazing. Check this out. Look at the range on it. Pretty much all the way across the map. So you can leave them in your base, except for like later in the game if you want to move out. On team games, might move out a little bit. But watch this. I'm going to call in a rocket barrage. And this doesn't cost any resources, but just has a cooldown. So I'd recommend putting them on a hotkey with like shift one, like control one or something. So that I usually put my artillery on a hotkey that I can call in as I need to. And now they're doing a rocket barrage and it's going to be cause a lot of damage. So it's a super terrifying vehicle uh, to have up against because a lot of time it sits in its main and it's, you can't really attack it sometimes. So that's going to be that. And those are all of the vehicles uh, from your tier three building. Now, after that, of course, you've got uh, your heavies that I told you about. Well, you got your Panzer III, your Stug. Uh, this supply deploys actually two of those. This is, uh, deploys the Panzer III with an Assault Grenadier. And then you can get Panzer IV with the Panzer Jaeger. That's going to be your AT uh, infantry uh, escort. And then you can get the Tiger. Um, so, pretty cool thing about that. Now, we talked about all the vehicles. We talked about all the units. Let's talk about the upgrades. Now... The upgrades is going to be at the armory here. You can see as you get your different buildings, it's going to unlock these different techs that you are able to research. So let's go through all those and then we'll talk about the battle groups. Okay, so your armory across the top, you can expect that's going to be your first tier units, uh, unit upgrades, right? You got grenade package for uh, some of your infantry, uh, your Panzer Grenadier squads. It's going to give them sticky grenades, anti or anti tank grenades, and uh, stick grenades. You've got the combat half tracks, which is going to upgrade your light carrier. So let me show you that guy. There's our light carrier. And right now we can't get this upgrade, right? Well, if I get the combat half track, now I can buy either the auto cannon conversion there, which is anti-infantry, uh, or I can buy the mortar conversion, which you can sit in base and shell the opponent or at a forward position or something like that. So you get that uh, at your... Uh, at your armory. We'll get our grenade upgrade, might as well. Next, you have veteran squad leaders. This is gonna upgrade your infantry, make them harder to hit, uh, and increases their squad size by one. Costs 200 manpower, so it's good for an infantry heavy army. 
your vehicle uh, survival package. So this is going to unlock smoke canister for your light vehicles and smoke launchers for your armored vehicles, which could really help you get out of a sticky situation or provide smoke for your infantry. Maybe that's pushing with a vehicle. It also is going to increase all of their health. So maybe you don't want smoke. It's going to give health to all vehicles. So don't forget that. It doesn't cost any fuel to get this upgrade. You're going to want to have that, have that late game. Tungsten core ammunition. Uh, this is going to increase the damage and penetration of auto cannons, uh, flak filling half cannons, Panzer threes, mortar threes, and tigers. So anything that shoot has a cannon, it's going to uh, provide uh, additional armor piercing rounds. It's going to be more effective against armor. On the last tier, we've got advanced field repairs. Uh, globally increases the repair speed of all the infantry, so they will repair uh, faster. Uh, as I mentioned, don't forget you can use your Panzer Grenadiers. Uh, you can use your uh your pioneers you have multiple units that are able to uh, repair unlike other factions um and then we've got emergency repair kits and this allows vehicles to repair when out of combat and stationary so you can toggle that on um, and all vehicles gain emergency repair kits and field improvements to durability so that will be let's see if i grab that tech yeah you can see i can toggle this on and get some uh it'll just auto repair or, sorry, the, the, it passively repairs when stationary, right? Um, okay, and then last but not least, we've got Rapid Advance. And with Rapid Advance, it's going to increase the speed and rotation rate of all your vehicles and enable them to capture territory. So those going to be all the possible upgrades you can get. And those are going to be all the units, buildings, upgrades for the DAC. Now let's talk about the battle groups. Now, I have a favorite one already, and... There's a reason for it. There's a really strong unit. Yeah, it's really hard to miss right now if you're going to play as faction. So let's go look at that first. The Italian Infantry Battle Group. And the unit that we're talking about, you might have seen it. The Gustatori Squad. This unit is absolutely broken. This isn't me being dramatic. This unit is ridiculously strong. I've seen memes about it already. Uh, he is absolute badass. I'll show, you, show him to you in a second here. Uh... Let's just spawn him in here. Um, I expect this is going to get nerfed uh, in the first balance patch because it's just so strong. Um, here they come. These guys, you can just tell from their swagger that these guys are going to be badass. This are your Italian infantry. You can you immediately want to upgrade them for 80 munitions to get their... Uh, it gives them the flamethrower, and then they can cut through barbed wire like you ever need to do that. Uh, but these guys, they've got flamethrowers. Look at that. And, they, and of course, they're super, super strong. I mean, you will just melt opponents. In addition to their flamethrowers, uh, they also have submachine guns when you get close range. Um, and they have uh, resistance to... Let's see, does it say it on the tooltip here? I thought it did. They've got resistance to being uh, pinned. Uh, so, there you go. Reduces incoming suppression, increases speed, and makes squad harder to hit for a short period of time. So you might think, maybe we'll use a machine gun to pin these bad guys down. They are passively going to uh, gonna get this, and it's harder to pin them down. And you can uh, sprint out of smoke. So, say you're running up here, there's a grenade, uh, a, a machine gun shooting at you. Uh, you can just pop some smoke on them. They're going to throw that smoke. And watch the speed of these guys. And now they're going to get turbo speed. And you're suddenly you're on top of them. And you are lighting them up with flames. And making them retreat. And doing so much damage. You can also, if there's like a bunch of infantry. And you can't, and you're like, you're trying to stay alive. You can stand inside the smoke. And you can just attack ground. You can use E. So I highly recommend attacking ground these guys. And you can even, with from within smoke. And if you can't see them, do damage to the opponent. Uh, but I'm serious. You can, you can basically start off the game, make a few of these uh, Panzer Pioneer or Grenadiers, and then get, pick up this. It costs two command points, and make a few of these and get the Flamethrower. It's so damn strong. Just make sure you get some AT um, back behind it. But that's going to be a popular unit for the uh, Italian Infantry. This is the battle group I've been going with when I've been playing. Uh, I, after that, I usually like to go for... Uh, for territory booty traps this allows uh you can also build these defensive machine gun bunkers which are pretty cool it costs resources but uh i'm, I'm gonna get this one just so we i can, can show you uh you can lay traps so i can run up here to a, gr a territory that i own and i'm going to be able to uh build it's a, it only costs 30 munitions it's going to lay a trap so when the opponent comes here it's going to be a big boom and do tons of damage to them 
you can also get the uh, toad howitzer, which costs four command points. I really like calling this in. It is expensive, 420 manpower and 40 fuel. So make sure you don't take it mid-map and let it fall into the hands of the opponent or something. Um, and it does come in with a little truck, so you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to offload it by pressing F. But look at the range in this thing. You see the mini-map? I mean, there's not a whole lot of reason to move it a whole lot further than your main base. You can probably hit most of anything. Uh, I'll go ahead and just barrage this just so you can see the type of damage it'll do. Here it goes. Cost no resources. Boom. Gonna do a barrage. Boom. You see, already taking some damage. Now, this is the anti, uh, anti tank gun, but you can see that's gonna be super effective. So, you can shell the opponent. Let's park that bad boy in your base. Maybe you've got the Stuka in here, too. You can have a, an artillery party, especially in team games. Okay, I'm gonna stop him so he doesn't keep firing. Uh, so that's the left side of the battle group. And then on the right side, you've got to the light tank battle group, which is two light tanks you can get now. Honestly, these are pretty underwhelming. But if you got a bunch of infantry and maybe you haven't, you don't want to go up armor sections next or something, these are some light tanks you can use to disrupt the opponent. You can upgrade them uh, to, uh, uh, to be a flame tank, which is super devastating to a lot of infantry. They've done a ton of infantry um, or line of sight, so... Remember, these are just, they're, they're pretty weak, so be careful with them, you're going to lose them. Uh, you can also get a hold the line, designates a friendly sector to improve the performance of the infantry within the sector and be more uh, difficult to capture, so you can, it's basically like a buff. Register artillery, designates a light artillery barrage over the selected territory or victory point. Now, a very, a caveat about this, the downside. You're not able to call this register artillery outside of your territory, which kind of is underwhelming for an artillery already calling. You typically want to use it on opponent, but you can use it defensively if they're taking one of your points. Uh, that one's not going to work. It's not connected, but you can call in some arty. Uh, on the other side, this one's really, really fun. I love using this one, especially for trying to hold a point. Propaganda War. This gives you a little radius to set out on the map wherever you want. And what it's going to do is drops leaflets and all the infantry that it's uh, within radius are going to force them to retreat back home. And it's so frustrating to play against this. Like maybe they're trying to grab this point and they almost have it and boom, you hit them with the Propaganda War and they, they force retreat all the way back home. Or maybe they have like all their infantry clumped up and you make them all retreat back home. Maybe it's on a capture point at the very end of the game for a photo finish. Pretty crazy. Um, so I love that ability. So I typically have been going for Propaganda War instead of Register Artillery. And then last but not least, you've got Prepared Positions. All team weapons, that's going to be your gun emplacements, etc. Uh, have increased line of sight and take less incoming damage. Or you can get the Barrage, a 305mm Barrage of a target area. Going to do a huge uh, Barrage. Flares are launched during it as well. So those are your options. Italian Infantry is definitely my favorite. Let's look at the other battle groups. I'm going to go ahead and reset them. So we talked about the Italian Infantry Battle Group. Let's talk about the Italian Combined Arms. So you can do this one. And with this Italian Combined Arms Battle Group, you can get a Pact of Steel, which reduces the cost of all of the vehicles of DAC uh, by 15%. You can get an Artillery Cover. It's going to be a light to medium off-map artillery to overwatch the targeted area, and it will target infantry and vehicles. Pretty cool. You can get an Assault Gun. Let's go ahead and spawn one of those in. Uh, again, like these tanks you're going to call in with these battle groups, they're okay. They're, they're gonna they're gonna be decent, but they're not gonna be as good as your some of your main tanks are gonna traditionally get. Uh, so I don't really go for those a ton, but they can be nice. There's so many different options of ways you can combine these, right? I'm not gonna tell you they're good or bad. Uh, you can get uh, Breda Model 30 light machine guns, and it's gonna upgrade your Burgess Leary and Panzer Grenadiers uh, with the light machine gun. Um, and that's pretty cool. Now that we talked about the unit. This is a strategy you might see uh, is uh, burglar area span. Now they cost 320, but check, take a look at these guys. Uh, you can upgrade them to have light machine guns, uh, and they have a grenade that does a ton of freaking damage. So you'll see people doing strategies where they just keep spawning in these units as their mainline infantry, um, and then maybe they add in some AT later. Maybe they call in some of these other things. Uh, and this up, uh, improves Burgessary yeah, combat abilities. You can do force recon, increases the line of sight of infantry when they're near vehicles. 
Uh, vehicle support uh, increases the capture and decapture rate of infantry when they're near vehicles. And then lastly, the strafing run. I'm just going to do a uh, an air strafing run from off map. So there you go. It's going to come in there. Okay, so that is going to be the... Uh, the battle creeps. That's going to be the Italian combined arms. Last but not least, the armored support. So I would say if you're not doing... I mean, I think each of these has their own scenarios. Personally, I like Italian infantry quite a bit. Uh, if you want to do Burger Series spam or something, maybe this is a strategy to go for. But the yeah, armored support also would be very good if you're that. really leaning into armor, which the DAC has amazing armor. So let's start with one of the big ones, the uh, the Command Panzer four medium tank. Look at this bad boy. Coming on in. Uh, now, you can only get one of these. Uh, so he's going to come on in. Max one Panzer IV tank on the battlefield. There he is. And he's going to be awesome. I'll we'll put him next door there. We'll do maybe a dedicated video on all the tanks so you can see all these bad boys in action. Uh, you can get veteran gunners, which is passive. Increases the penetration of all your vehicles. You can do a Stuka dive bomb, uh, which is very, very uh, targeted. So let's do it. Let's do it here. So you can see a little bit of carnage there. He's going to come to Stuka dive bomb. You can do an anti-tank loiter. This is amazing. Two Stukas are going to watch in the area, and if they... Oh my God. You believe me yet? <laughs> this is so good. The Stuka dive bomb. Um, Anti-tank loiter will basically look... Uh, you designate an area, and it will circle on the mini-map, you can see, and take out any tanks that run within that area. Now, they can get shot down by AA, so just be aware of that. But it's going to be super massive, especially in team games, can be really good where you have a lot of armor going against. Vehicle awareness is going to enable vehicles to utilize vehicle awareness ability. And it's going to be passive. Uh, you can get a flam panzer, uh, medium tanks, we'll call that in. That's going to be a flame tank. Uh, superior fire drills is going to improve the performance of your machine guns, essentially, for all of them. This one's very interesting. Salvage kits. Enables your pioneer, Panzer Pioneers or Panzer Grenadiers to use the rapid salvage ability. So so now if we go to, to our uh, Pioneer or Grenadier, you can go up here and you can savage a wreck for fuel. So if you've burnt out a vehicle or lost a vehicle, you can get some of that resources back and help boost all these other crazy vehicles you're going to be calling in on the game. Panzer Storm. Going to increase the speed of all the infantry and give them immunity. It's going to be... Uh, to engine criticals when active. So it's going to be a timed uh, attack. And then lastly, Battlefield Savage. Uh, salvage. Enemy vehicles that are destroyed by affected units grant a manpower and fuel. Pretty amazing, right? All of the three of these battle groups are amazing. Let me know down in the comments which battle group you're going to choose. And with that, that is going to be all of the units, guides, uh, yeah, units, buildings, upgrades battle groups for deutsches africa core i hope you enjoyed this faction overview leave me a comment below if you did and take a second maybe subscribe to the channel and you can catch me playing this faction live on twitch.tv slash fitzbro where i'll be working on putting together a build order guide for you so be on the lookout for that next video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one